Hello, greetings friends. Mari Smith here coming to you from lovely sunny San Diego. And I am delighted to bring you this part two of a two part training all about Facebook and Instagram video ads, best practices, marketing best practices as well, organic. The main focus being on video and how you can capitalize on video right now to communicate better with your audience. Now, of course, I'm on camera live right now, or you're maybe catching the replay afterwards. And when I say video on Facebook or Instagram, I'm not talking just on camera right now. Millions of people around the world are being forced, unfortunately, to work from home. And maybe all you have is your phone or you have a laptop with a webcam and you don't have that good lighting and you are just really struggling with how to do video. Well, that's what I'm going to teach you in the second part of this training. You can catch the first part was on, is on my Facebook page. Uh, we'll link you up in the comments if you don't see it. And so what you can do though, is you can absolutely use the power of a beautiful online video creation software like in video and in video super inexpensive, $5 a month. If you buy the annual plan, it's like $60 for the whole year. And you can use a combination of your own photos, videos, but more importantly, you can tap into a huge library of royalty free video clips and photos. So you can create, we're going to show you some examples. You can create your own beautiful professional videos without ever having to go on camera. Okay. So let's dive in friends. I've got some slides for you. Any questions whatsoever, pop them below. I'll get to them. And then what I'm going to do, I'll talk a little bit more about this in a moment, but, uh, when I'm completed with this, uh, training, you can join me in my social scoop group, uh, for any more in-depth Q and a. Okay, friends, let's do this. So my Facebook and marketing Mark, excuse me, Facebook marketing and advertising best practices, because there's a lot of confusion right now as people are just wondering, gosh, should I just pause everything? Is it even appropriate to still do ads? Uh, how can I adjust my social media strategy? And that's what I'm going to address here for you today, because I know there's a lot of confusion and it's people are just really struggling. As I say, this is brought to you. This training is brought to you in partnership. I am an ambassador for in video and you can go to invideo.io slash Mari Smith. That's where you got that incredible 50% offer. We'll do a demo and I'll give you more details in a moment. Like I say, it's just a um, really powerful, simple, easy way to produce professional videos while you're sitting in your home or anywhere. So the reason I really emphasized video on Facebook is a quick review of the training we did two weeks ago. And those of you that might not have had a chance to catch that video on Facebook gets the best organic reach, best reach, best engagement. Okay. So, and what I'm going to teach you in, in a couple of slides coming up is how you can build a whole system. Um, and it doesn't take a lot of effort. You'll see, I'm going to show you exactly step-by-step step of how you can broaden your audience and reach more people, especially those folks who might be your ideal customers right now. And I know that a lot of us are having to pivot. And those of you who maybe had an offline business or figuring out how do we even bring this online. And so this is a great way to reach more folks is through video and as I say, not necessarily to camera using stock footage. So let's keep, uh, keep going here with the slides that gets the best engagement. Now I know I'm doing live. Like I say, this is any video, whether it's stock footage, it's you on camera, it's, it's images of, of, of anything products, uh, relevant of course, to what you do. It's the most affordable ad unit too. And you'll see exactly how in a moment when I teach you exactly how that works, because especially right now, ad costs have dropped by somewhere between 30 and 60%. Why? Because a lot of brands and businesses around the world in literally by mid March, early to mid March were pulling their campaigns because the pandemic really kind of blindsided us, didn't it? Many folks, thought leaders 
could see was coming, but the speed at which it really impacted the world and the business world in particular was overwhelming. And I think that as a, a quick reaction, a lot of advertisers, and rightfully so, uh, pull, pulled the campaigns all together. However, there are absolutely appropriate ways that you can still continue on reaching your audience, connecting with them, making different offers. All right. So it gets video views and that's what I'm going to show you It's the best performing top of funnel content is what I talked about last time. And I want to do a quick review here. Top of funnel, meaning that when people don't really know you and now you're getting them kind of like aware of you, very inexpensive, a penny of you, a 10th of penny of you, if you can get, uh, you could reach your audience at the 10th of a penny per view. It's amazing, amazing what you can do. So you can absolutely use video to connect more at this time and my video there. Uh, you might be having difficulty, like I say, creating quality videos during this, this lockdown, or, or even if you're on partial lockdown, full lockdown, wherever you are, you're probably working with limited resources. If you're used to having your whole studio or your, your, your desktop, uh, situation and set up and colleagues, and it's just very, very different right now to try to cope and even function working from home, right? Many people even freak out the idea of even being on camera. It is not natural for the vast majority of the population in, in the work world, right? And this is where I'm talking about professional videos like I'm doing right now, the lighting, the audio, the camera, and being able to share my screen. Later, I'll show you where you can put comments on the screen is being able to do that and then seamlessly manage the tech and also be on the camera and make eye contact. All of that is like, ah, for, for most people, it's kind of right up there with public speaking being the number one fear. And so therefore I want you to see how powerful you, you, and easy it is to create non camera video when, uh, when you're on this, uh, lockdown and even when you're not on the lockdown, of course. So no problem. As I say, in video to the rescue, you can use stock footage and then you could also blend it with clips and images of your own products, anything you might have already on your hard drive or on your, um, camera roll on your photo that would be appropriate. So I'll show you how to do that. You can also go to your Facebook page or your Instagram, your Twitter, or anywhere you've put videos before YouTube. Of course, if you have the video file, this is a great way to take clips, not necessarily if you do like a, you know, a 40 minute or 30 minute or 20 minute, maybe you just take a little few minutes clip of that or a few seconds, drop it into in video and you can repurpose that content with some text overlay and do your stories, do your Instagram, do all kinds of different videos. And of course, with the paid placement as well. Now then Mark Zuckerberg just yesterday, published a beautiful video. Of course, the Facebook team put it together and I wanted to draw it to your attention because again, with that power of video, the fact that here's, you know, the CEO of Facebook, of course, they've got resources, right? But the point I want to make is I hop over to Zuck's page, uh, our profile, when you get a chance, I'm not going to play the whole video right now. I honestly, you got to reach for the Kleenex. This is a real tearjerker. It's beautifully done, beautifully done. And you will see the way in which this video is created. You see, it's mostly, mostly it's a blend of some images, some little video clips. Some of them could be stock. Some of them are from other, you know, um, sources. And, and there's a beautiful track. You got to listen to it with the sound over uh, the sound on, and it's just, it gives you hope, uh, the message, the storytelling, it's really, really beautifully done. And, and it goes, it ends, believe me, it ends on a, on a positive note, people connecting and people, the whole message is I love, I love people's faces, beautifully done, beautifully done. So never lost an honor to, to, to solidarity and resilience of so many people. So that was Zucking team put that together. And that's the kind of video I'm talking about. Well, a, a, an aspect of that, even if you created something, you know, similar, but, but totally different in terms of the content is what I'm talking about, where it's not just a talking head. It's a variety of clips that have been put together with a track overlay, maybe some music. So very powerful way to do storytelling. So to be able to tell your story, get your message across, communicate and connect with your audience in a more intimate and in-depth 
human way, a human way. It's this, this beautiful video by Facebook, this concept of I love people's faces is what the, the narrative is and how important it is for us to connect with human beings, right? Our fellow human beings, which is a real challenge right now in this lockdown. So um, when it comes to Facebook ads, as I mentioned, the costs have come down. And this is people were asking me on my page yesterday, how do you know that? Where does the source come from? Well, I've talked to numerous Facebook ad experts, agency, like people that do media buys. And, and, um, and, and that's what they're telling me as well, is that the costs have come down between 30 and 60% right now uh, compared to previous campaigns. In addition, when I, uh, later when I show you some examples of I've been taking all kinds of screenshots and saving ads from my own uh, feed, and I encourage you to do the same, it's incredible how few ads there are. You can tell that it's, it's really, there's a lot of inventory. There's a lot of placement available right now because so many people have stopped advertising. And um, so there's an opportunity here to see how you can get creative and connect with your audience using video and using some, a little bit of paid placement. Okay, so you should, should you keep running Facebook ads? Should you change your social media strategy? That's what I put in the description. I'm gonna say yes and yes. Of course, it depends because the key is you, your content, whether it's organic or paid, definitely needs to be relevant, on point, sensitive to the current climate. And I'll show you some examples of ones and I, I was gonna actually grade them. I was gonna give them an A plus or B minus or C minus. I was gonna grade them, but I'll, you'll see in a moment when I show you some examples of ones that I feel really hit the mark and others are maybe not, not so much. Uh, because when I say relevant on point sensitive to the current climate, it doesn't mean that every ad we need to be like talking about um, words like crisis and pandemic and and uh, lockdown and difficult times and challenging times. We know that now and that's absolutely certain for now. It's very unpredictable. We don't know how long it's going to last. We don't know how the wave is sweeping across the nation and the world. And so it's like finding that really deep way to connect with your audience that gives them ideally even a little bit of hope, a little bit of hope, encouragement, love and compassion and empathy without going too deep down the path of the challenge and the difficulty. Um, it's, it's a fine balance. You'll see some examples. Um, and then later when I go live in my social scoop, group, uh, we're going to do some, some more, um, analysis, some audits I'm calling them some audits. So the messaging, like I say, show empathy, show compassion, by the way, and, um, I've got some really cool slides. I'm going to, um, cause I've got my, my, my most important slide is coming up and I will give you these slides afterwards. I'll pop a link just for free. You don't need to give me your email or anything. I'll just give you these slides because there's a really, really, really important slide coming up that shows you exactly how you can um, utilize the Facebook paid placement in what sequence and what audiences and what budget. Meanwhile, let's go back to video, talking about video and in video. This, I'm gonna play for you a video that I made in in video, and it's actually geared towards a hair salon. So if you are a hair salon, I do have uh, one of my clients in particular I'm thinking of, shout out to Dania, that uh, owns a hair salon and I have anybody here who has a physical, you know, in person, I'm going to pull up the edit so you can see that I'll play the video, but then I'll also show you the background of what it looks like, uh, in, in the, uh, software. If you have any kind of a physical in person business, right? A store where people actually coming in, that's probably going to be the most challenging, most challenging. Oh, my heart just goes out to anybody in that position. Certainly, I know restaurants, cafes are doing um, takeout and curb, curbside pickup and deliveries. Then you've got um, many folks here might be able to offer online and to do uh, some kind of a training or teaching or classes. I know I'm seeing people doing singing classes, dance classes, martial arts, yoga, you name it. That can all be done somewhat online to I uh, paid free, you know, there's lots of different models out there that we can talk about. This video, it's uh, what I'm gonna show you 
is um, a hair coloring class. This was literally just a template. I just took a template from InVideo and then I added, and it has a little music, so I'm gonna play it for you. First one was talking about a class. Now I'm talking about color, color here. That's what my hair's gonna look like after this lockdown. <laughs> and now this, I'm gonna hit pause there for a second, because this is actually from, I think this is a company called eSalon. It doesn't have their name on it, but I got it from their site. So eSalon.com, shout out to you guys, because they will actually mix they're, they'll mix the color. If you're the type of person that typically, I'm talking mostly to females, I know guys get their hair color too, but if you go to a hair salon regularly and now you're like, ah, how am I going to do my roots? How am I going to color my hair? And so if you have a hair salon, this is my friend Dania is doing, she's calling up her clients and also doing some outreach in social media and saying, hey, and showing through video, I can create your normal color kit and I'll ship it to you in the mail. Now, of course, now you got to do it yourself, but she'll help you. She'll, she'll do these instructions for you. Uh, and that's what I think is really uh, a great solution. Okay. So that's the video. Now, if you go in the back, back here of how easy it was to create using in video, this as I say, is just a template because you can see it says example.com. So I just, I just used their template and then I added in, I go to up here to uh, media and I just search for, actually I think I search for hair color, hair color or coloring. And up it comes out, all these are videos. And then you've also got images. So you see what one you want, you just drag and drop it over here. Super duper easy. Uh, same with this one. I just, uh, I tend to get just the same thing. I, I asked for hair color and or hair coloring, uh, something like that. I think this one's fun. And you can click on it and just preview it, right? Say that, oh, that's pretty. I think I want my hair like that. Mari's going to have long pink hair <laughs> by the end of this lockdown. And so then uh, you do the text overlay. You can do all kinds of changes, the colors, the font, the way it slides in, the size. This is square. Uh, and then we just drop in. This is another image because you can upload your own, right? So here's uh, where I uploaded my own over in the left here. You can put your logo on it. So many great things. And this one ended up being, let me see the length of it, 24 seconds, uh, which is totally fine. You want to, want to do maximum 15 seconds if you're going to do what's called an in-stream in -stream ad. So that's where your ad, just like on YouTube, that your ad would appear before someone else's video or in the middle of it. Exactly like YouTube. We've all seen that. Now, if your ad is well-targeted, your video ad is well-targeted, people won't want to skip it. In fact, you can't skip it on Facebook, but I know for me on YouTube, if I see especially a long ad, because ads can be really long on YouTube, and that's fine, and they work. Sometimes I, I've been known to watch, I'm not kidding, I've been known to watch a 20 minute ad on YouTube because it was that good, it was informative, it was educational, and then I might go on to actually sign up for what they were offering, and that's the power of video. Uh, but, um, with doing a video ad, if you, an in-stream, that means if it's going to be, a, a pre, they call it pre-roll or mid-stream or in-stream, then it's five to 15 seconds and it's unskippable. Or you simply take a video like this live, turn it into an ad afterwards or a longer one or a shorter one, doesn't matter, but you can do all kinds of different kinds of video ads. All right, so let's keep going. Next, the power of, as I was saying to you earlier about the ad cost and how you can reach people at literally for um, ten, uh, a penny, excuse me, a, a penny per view or even a tenth of a penny per view. What you do, and, and I'm going to give you screenshots because uh, sometimes I don't like to do a live demo in case anything goes wonky. But so I've got the screenshots for you here inside of your ads manager. I've shown you the exact area. You go to create audience and you click where my little pink arrow is custom audience. And then look at all these ways that Facebook gives you to create different audiences. And it's really nice. They keep improving it. They keep improving it. Um, sometimes it's frustrating because you go to find something that's not there, but mostly the improvements or the changes that Facebook makes to ads manager are really powerful. So look at this, two different ways to create custom audiences. One is with your sources. This is where last training part one, two weeks ago, I said to make sure you have the Facebook pixel installed on your website. When you have the pixel on your website, now you can build an audience of people who have visited your website, not just everybody on mass, 
But let's say that you have a special offer, you're signing up for a webinar or making a, a selling a course or you're selling online hair coloring uh, or whatever it might be, then you can gather an audience of people that looked at your offer page but didn't purchase, or maybe they even got as far as adding the product or service to their cart and they didn't check out. You can circle back and retarget them. We've all been on the receiving end of retargeting, right? We've all seen an ad where we've gone to visit something, we bought it, or sometimes you actually did buy it or you didn't buy it, you see the ad. Um, then also this one, customer list is where you can take your email list or your phone number list, permission-based, right? People have subscribed, opted in, and you can upload that. This is golden, this one right here. Make a good note of that. Um, I'm focusing predominantly on video views here today, but I'm just giving you a quick overview of some of the key uh, areas here that you can do because customer list is one of the most powerful areas in conjunction with expanding with the video views. You can upload a list of your, for example, your top paying customers. And then you can say to Facebook, this is a little bit beyond the scope of today's training, but I, I, I do have a, I, I have a screenshot coming out with the lookalikes. You can upload your email list of your top paying customers and you can assign a value to how much that lifetime value of that customer is worth. And you can say to Facebook, go and find me more people like this. And that's a way to expand your reach with, um, a, a much, much hotter, a hotter audience. So you're not just targeting cold. You don't want to target cold people means they've never heard of you. Warm means they've maybe seen a video. Hot means that they're possibly ready to even buy, which is great. So, and, and then, so that's your sources and then app and offline. If you have a, if you have a physical store, then you've got Facebook sources. So this is a video we're going to focus on also totally anybody that's interacted with your Instagram business profile. They've uh, signed up to a lead form or even just interacted with a lead form in any engagement whatsoever with your Facebook page. And that one is, could be like they've saved a post, they've messaged you, they've liked your page, all kinds of good things there. And then the events. All right. So main one we're focusing on today though is video. So when you click on that video, this is what you'll see next. Facebook's going to ask you to choose what they call a content type. And this is golden in here because you can say, all right, Facebook, I want to pick everybody who's viewed at least three seconds. And the three seconds is what qualifies or, or, or counts as a view on Facebook. Okay. It's minimum three seconds on YouTube. I believe it's 30 seconds. It's so much longer. Uh, but on Facebook, the count of you when someone's it's been on the screen on your desktop or your phone for a minimum three seconds. Then you've got 10 seconds. You've got more what they call through play. If you've ever done any Facebook ads, you're familiar with what that means through play, as it says right here. If let's say, so, let's say you have a 10 second or a 12 second or 13 second or five second means they've completed. They watched the whole thing or at least 15 seconds. If it's longer, then let's say, <clears throat> excuse me, let's say that you have a 10 minute video. You've done a 10 minute video. And you want to reach people that have watched, let's say half of that. That's five whole minutes. This is the beauty of it. Can you imagine on television streaming a five minute ad where people have paid totally rapt attention. They've watched five whole minutes of attention, right? We're living in an attention economy. If you place a 10 minute, you upload a 10 minute video and you want to reach people who've watched half of that five minutes. That's a massive captive audience. So the thing is though, with this creating video engagement, custom audiences is not just, you're not just going to pick one and then move on. You can take the same video or collection of videos. Sometimes I'll do like in the last 30 days, 90 days, put all the videos together. And I want to know, okay, we're going to do just the three seconds. We're going to go wide. And then I'm also going to narrow it down. I want people that watch a quarter of it, half of it, so on and so forth. Then, so this example right here, I've, I've taken five, excuse me, four videos. Those are all longer ones. Those, each of those four was a Facebook live, Facebook live of, of, uh, 20 or 30 or 20 or 30 minutes or more. And I'm saying, okay, Facebook, I want to know who's watched at least 25% of these four videos. Then in this little magic screen right here, this magic area or field, it says in the past, now I'm going 90 days, but you can go any number of days in here up to 365 and there's magic in that area as well. You'll see, um, I think I have another slide coming up. 
What that means is, let's say, let's say you upload a video, you go to end video, create a video, and you upload that. Now people are playing it and watching it organically. And then you're like, okay, now I'm going to go into ads manager and I want to reach people that watch that video. Let's say it's a week later and you say, I want to reach, reach people that watch that video, um, in the last seven days. So you put seven in there in that, in the past seven days, but maybe you also create a separate audience that says in the last three days and you exclude those people. I know I'm getting real complicated here, but the point I'm making in simple terms is you don't necessarily want to immediately retarget people who've just watched the video. So you can hold those off. That's a much more advanced technique. Got questions about that? Let me know, pop on below, come into the social scoop group. We can go more in depth into that. It's a much more advanced technique. But in any case, the main point though, is the length of time. Okay. And then you can build, uh, these audiences from any Facebook video. Okay. Any length of any video, you can create it in end video, upload it to your page. That's often called a, a, a VOD or video on demand live. Like I'm doing here today. Once it's finished, it's a VOD, a video on demand. And that's now on your page. Then you can do, um, oopsie daisies, pull myself down there. Uh, videos and groups. No, oh my gosh, friends, this is golden. Woohoo. This one, oops, point the other way. <laughs> videos and groups. People ask me all the time, how can I reach my audience in a group? How can I retarget group members? If you do a video in your group that has to be linked to your page and you load that video into your group as your page or a live, do a live, go live in your group as your page. And you will see that video showing up. If I go back, my screens here, it will be one of these videos here and you can gather up that audience and retarget them. Pretty cool, huh? I think not a lot of folks know that, but that's a really wonderful way to retarget people in your group. You can't retarget people in other groups. People ask me that all the time too. Stories videos are now there too. You can see where you can actually, uh, and stories, you know, they're going to be 15 seconds, but still, let's say you're getting some traction on your stories videos in Instagram or Facebook, and you can actually gather up an audience of folks that have watched your stories. And then, as I say, also Instagram videos, feed videos as well. All right. So those are all the ways you can gather up a video views, custom audience. Now, some tips for you, you can create multiple, like I said, on that previous screen is don't just think, okay, I'm just going to do one big three second audience of everybody who's ever watched a video. You could do that but think about slicing and dicing it, uh, doing multiple different audiences. Default three seconds. If the longer someone's viewed a video, then the warmer, like I say, the more likely someone is to, uh, want to get to know you more. And then that days field, as I mentioned, the three days, seven days up to 365 days. Uh, and you could, as I mentioned there, consider retargeting viewers. And that's just another example in the past 30 days, but excluding the past three days. So you're not retargeting too quickly. And you can, if you want, I mean, some advertisers retarget really fast. All right. So the retarget comes when you're going to go and create a new ad, and that could be something on your wall already, or it could be a fresh video, right? A fresh video that you go ahead and you create in, in, in video here. I'm going to uh, pull that up and we're going to do one real quick. And you're going to do a separate video to retarget your video viewers. And you could use a fresh video with a call to action. Okay. Or it could be driving people uh, through to a landing page. And ideally I'd recommend that you have a, a video on that landing page, landing pages with videos on them always convert better. So when you come to in video, watch this, I'm going to go to the, the categories of templates. They have so many templates. It's over 2000 templates, click on video ads. And then you've got three different sizes. You've got the 16 by nine, which is that landscape. You've got nine by 16 which is perfect for stories. And you can absolutely do ads just made for stories, or you've got the square and there's a whole bunch of them. It'll say view all. I'm going to pick this one right here. This looks fun. It says world book day. So I'm going to click on that and, and it will actually, um, start playing. It's got a little music on it and I think, Oh, that looks fun. And you can even, when you get in here, go, Hmm, you know what? I think I'll do square instead or whatever, but right now I'm going to go, got it. Okay. I'm going to use that template. So we'll let it load in there in a second. And, um, 
The cool thing is that you can take any template, any of the pre-made templates, or you can start from scratch and do your own thing. Super duper easy. Or you could actually just take a template and then and it'll build out from it. Uh, I'm just trying to put my, my uh, video so it's not covering anything up. I'll put myself down there. Okay, so this, so it's got background. You could search, uh, go into media and search a different thing for that. Then uh, this one here, that's a static image. So let's say, okay, I wanna add a scene. I'm gonna add another scene right here at the uh, after it. And then I'm going to go, you know what? Okay, I'm gonna search for, I'm gonna to go to media. I'm gonna search for books or I could search for reading. Let's say that you've got books to sell and you wanna do them um, as not necessarily physical books, but maybe you wanna do some eBooks. Oh, there's interesting. Here's somebody reading a book uh, on a reader, right? He's reading it on his tablet. Saying, okay, yep, yeah, actually I want that one. So I'm just gonna pick it up and drag it over. Come on. There it goes. Perfect. Now what it's going to do is it's going to actually say, cause this is a nine seconds. So that, you know what? I only want like five seconds of that. And, and you know, I go like that and you can kind of play it and see how, how much I want of it. That's perfect. Great. Hit done and off it goes. And I'm going to go like this and put my text wherever I want. It's so easy to use. So easy. Honestly, anybody can do this. Anybody can do this. Super duper easy. Uh, free eBooks, whatever I want to say there. Right. And then you can tweak the music, add more scenes, all kinds of really cool things you can do. Um, edit the different ways that it, that it uh, animates, the, um, add your logo, as I mentioned. Uh, very, very simple and powerful tool. And they were, as I mentioned, in video was actually voted the world's easiest software, easiest to use. So let's say you've done that and you've made another video, now you're coming back to retarget. Now I know I'm giving you different examples from a, from a hair salon to a book reading, and uh, but obviously pertinent to what you do. So when you come back, you're gathered up your audience of people who viewed the videos, the first videos, the first video you did. It could be a live, a Facebook Live. And now you're circling back to retarget, meaning that you're placing an, a different piece of content in front of that same audience with a different message in a different, um, call to action, right? Okay, so the lead ad is where you're actually having people fill in their name and email, or it could be a click to messenger ad. I wouldn't do a click to messenger ad unless you've got a chat bot set up. If you don't have a chat bot, then just be ready to respond to people uh, promptly if you're doing a click to messenger ad. So different ways that you could choose to retarget. Now, here's the area I'm talking about to expand your audience with what are called lookalikes. And this can be absolutely the secret sauce. I talked about how you could upload your best paying clients and, and create a look like that way. What Facebook does is it looks at what's called your core audience, your core audience being an email list, customer list, which is emails or phone numbers, um, or people who viewed your video or people who've looked at your certain parts of your website, people who've engaged with your page, so on and so forth. And then Facebook goes, okay, we're gonna create an audience of people that are similar to your core audience. And I love to do that with video views because I want more people to be aware of the top of funnel, of warming people up. And then you can do website traffic. People have landed on certain pages, customer lists. I just mentioned all that. So high lifetime value, LTV is lifetime value customers. All right, so this is the magic slide that I mentioned um, that I'm gonna make sure that I want you to have these slides because this, this suggested ad strategy with how to reach your audience, what objective to choose, which types of audiences, what types of ads, how to split up your budget, and then, I have to move my video, then three different types of audiences. Cold means they've never heard of you. It's, and this is a big mistake that almost all new advertisers make is they take an, a sales ad. They, they're trying to make a sale right away and they're advertising to a cold audience. Now, if it's very inexpensive, no problem. If it's inexpensive, then a cold audience could respond and make a purchase right away. But ideally, you want to kind of warm people up. And, the, and it's the, those video views are one of the most effective ways to convert a cold audience into warm, meaning now they've seen you, they've seen your video, they've become aware of you, they started following you, they've liked your page, they're interacting with your content. 
And then as you're kind of leading them uh, through your funnel, if you will, now the hot audience is what's called people who are like much more likely to buy. They're much more ready to buy. So let's fill in these gaps for you and you'll see. I'm going to pop myself down here for a moment uh, and I'll have to move myself around so that uh, <laughs> I think I'll put myself right there. No, over here is good, Mari. Uh, okay, so the first one, video views. That's what I'm talking about. This whole presentation today is about how to gather more video views using your custom audiences and then expanding with lookalikes. If you've got questions, please pop them below. I'll be happy to answer in a moment. And then I'm also going to be uh, connecting with you as well in my uh, Social Scoop Facebook group. Make sure you're uh, uh, in there. Next, the, the type of objective you're going to choose for the next um, ad in the sequence, you can do more video views, like you could place another video and you could make a series of videos in InVideo. The nice thing, by the way, is let's say if I go back to my InVideo, I could literally take this same video and uh, clone it, make a copy of it, and then just swap some of the images out. I might use some of the same, same um, text with the same messaging, right? Up to <laughs> with the same messaging. And I know it's, a sh oh my goodness, I think lot, most of the bookstores unfortunately have to close right now, hopefully just temporarily. Uh, but maybe you have books you're selling online or you have eBooks. But my point is you can go back and use the same video, replace some of the footage, put a different image in there, put a different video, uh, video in here, put a different, um, stock in there, different text overlay, change it up a little bit. So it's still on brand. Okay. Uh, so that might be another video lead generation is another possible. This is the objectives that you're choosing at the top of ads manager to come down like that. Okay. Then you've got, um, uh, messages, which is that click to messenger ad or traffic is where you're driving them to a specific landing page on your website. Now with your audience, that's gotten to know you a little bit through a series of, of content organic and paid, you can now, uh, select conversions or traffic or catalog sales. If you have a catalog, but this isn't hard and fast rules. These are some suggestions based on years of experience. So, um, but what a lot of people do is they take the conversions objective and they try to have a cold audience, um, making a sale, as I mentioned earlier, and not as effective. Then over here on your audiences, saved audiences is where you've gone into ads manager and you've selected interests, uh, location, age, and all kinds of demographics. And then the look like it's great. It has really great for doing cold, expanding that with the video views, warm, definitely people who've engaged with your page, video views, engage with Instagram, but then the hot ones, move my video here, the hot, uh, are people who visited a specific landing page, right? Or they've opted in, they've interacted with the lead form. They've, they've become, uh, they've interacted with your page. They've done a messenger conversation. Uh, or you're uploading a custom audience of your, your, um, past customers or, um, people on your, excuse me, on your email list subscribers. All right. And then the types of ads, and I'm going to pop this uh, work up there, <laughs> the types of ads, the first type is you're going to exactly like I'm doing right now. I'm educating, I'm informing, inspiring, maybe some entertainment, storytelling awareness. Okay. I'm not trying to go buy now buy myself right now. Hey, cold audience. Who's never heard of me. You're, you're giving value, you're educating, informing, being of service, seeing how you can help people. Now you can also shift into maybe some customer examples and some benefits some solutions in the warm. And then the hot is where now you're maybe going to make a special offer, a limited time, maybe a stronger call to action when you're doing that retargeting to reach people. And, and the hot people, <laughs> and then the budget split, I just put 25, 50 and 25 because you want to spend a little bit more, quite a bit more of your budget on that warm audience. And what people mistake people do, like I say, they'll put hundred percent of their budget into a cold audience with a conversion objective, trying to make a sale with people who've never heard of them. That doesn't really work on Facebook. Okay, friends, I'm going to give you these slides, uh, as I say, and now we're going to switch gears and look at some examples. As I mentioned, we've got, uh, really interesting ads, uh, going, going through the feeds right now. I've been keeping a close eye on them. 
I like to kind of tune in and say, hmm, how does this land with me? How does it make me feel? How is this sensitive? Is this on point for the current climate right now? Is it on brand for that particular brand? Does it make me want to continue following this person or this brand, even if I'm not interested in the offer right now? And I encourage you to do the same when you're surfing through your Facebook or Instagram feeds and you're seeing the sponsored content, it's a paid placement and you're going, hmm, how does this look particularly for video? I'm, I'm amazed at how few people are doing video right now. It's really a missed opportunity to, to connect more with your audience. And as I keep emphasizing friends, it's not about being on camera. If you don't want to be, if you do terrific, go for it. Just use your phone or use the webcam or go basic, put good lighting next to a window. You don't have to go all fancy and invest in a ton of gear. Not right now. You can do that a little bit later, but right now the key is to just make sure you get, get your message out there and you can do that using stock footage images that uh, video I showed you on Mark Zuckerberg's page where it starts out, it starts out with moving images. What happens with video is the movement that catches the eye as we're surfing through the feed and with the autoplay, all of a sudden the video starts playing and you stop and it draws you in. Okay. So, um, let's go back here and finish these up and get to my examples. So in video, go to nvideo.com slash Mari Smith. And you've got that $5 amazing, uh, offer makes it only uh, $60 for the whole year. Uh, anyone can use stunning videos or create some stunning videos, all use cases, super duper easy. You saw with that book video, like you pick a template, swap some in images in stock out if you want, or just use what they've given you, put your own text. And they were the number one product of the week on product hunt. And I mentioned they were voted the video uh, easiest, easiest video creation platform in the world by uh, ahead of uh, Adobe even on this survey by G2. So uh, five bucks a month in video.io slash Mari Smith. The link is in this uh, video. They've got over a million royalty free images and stock footage, 2000 templates like that book one I showed you and even the hair salon or the hair one was uh, also a, a template. They give you amazing, by the way, 24 seven live support. It's extraordinary. It's one of the key differentiators when I'm working with a brand is I, I, they have to be not only a top quality product, they have to provide great support. They even have the, the world's first AI artificial intelligent video assistant it gives you real time, almost real time feedback, making suggestions. Oh, maybe this text is a bit long. Consider putting it into a different scene. Um, and then also, as I demonstrated, on the part one training is you can do what's called article to video. You can just put some text and, and it will uh, create a video for you with suggested, um, scenes with stock image and stock video clips. So let's look at these ad examples that I've saved. I'm putting the best one first. <laughs> and that is my very dear friend, Janine Blackwell, whom I have known for many, many years and actually first discovered her through, I'm not kidding through a Facebook ad. And Janine, Janine teaches people how to create courses and, and uh, sell them online. And uh, we met in person. I've spoken at her events. When we first connected, like I say, <clears throat> excuse me, I know I say like I say a lot. It's funny when you become well aware of your own mannerisms. <laughs> when I saw an ad on Facebook years ago, I was like maybe five years ago. And I was so impressed with the, the professionalism, the integrity, the messaging, uh, Janine is just such a pro. So I was looking for examples and sure enough, I saw one from Janine and I'm going to show you, this is just a screenshot of the ad on uh, desktop. If I hop over to Janine's page, you know, you can do this with anybody's page. You can go to their page and you can click on page transparency right here. It says, see more. So you can see what ads people are running. And once you've actually seen it in your, in your feed, or you can just go to anybody's page and just see, and you'll see, it'll say, it'll say, you know, this page is currently running ads. So let's see if we can find that very ad. If I go to ad library, I was just double checking this last night for you. And I see that actually, I think she started a whole bunch of new ads. See how all these have started on April one. Hey, Janine, putting you in the hot seat here, girl. <laughs> so those are image ads, right? These are all image ads. And the reason you're seeing lots of different ones is because they're to different audiences. They're to different audiences, lots and lots of ads with her yellow, pretty yellow sweater. But the one I want to show you is the one in this screenshot right here, 
perfect example of what you can create using NVIDIA. Watch this, it's a square video. I'm gonna hit play on that one right here. You'll see it playing. See what I mean? It's just moving still images. And that little guy will go on rotation. It will autoplay on rotation and it catches your eye because of the movement. You could do this so easily, easily. I'm not kidding, 10 minutes or less using in video. And that guy is 10 seconds. So this one is actually, could be placed also that in stream, as I mentioned, the pre-roll or the um, in stream video ad, because it's only 10 seconds. Five to 15 is your uh, um, ideal length for putting it as a video ad in another video. If it's longer than that, it can still be a video ad. It just won't be before or after uh, or in the middle of another video. Um, I also really liked her, her uh, text. Let me see if I can actually click on this, see add details and there it goes. So, so what I'm noticing with almost all advertisers is how they're doing a lot of wording. So you've got so much you can see and then you have to hit see more like that, see more. And this was a screenshot from desktop, like I say. Also look at what views on this screenshot. She has 237,000 views on that one little 10 second square looping video. This is just a screenshot of it, but that's the real same video that I showed you right here. So she can be doing all kinds of great retargeting. Really beautiful, beautiful example. Good job, Janine. She gets an A plus. <laughs> then just a few others, not all of them are video ads. I captured them just for the sake of seeing what folks are doing with their ads out there and the wording and the types of things people are offering. And I can't believe <laughs> how many marketers are marketing, marketing training, <laughs> right? All the marketers are marketing or advertising how to do marketing, which I think is interesting. And so this is a uh, free live training, how to ethically pivot and profit. I don't know these guys. I just thought that was a interesting ad. Uh, this gentleman here was doing a, this is a video ad. So now I thought this was good. Are you working from home? Now that's the kind of wording I think is, is, is really on point. It's not too negative, but it's speaking directly to his audience. He's talking about how to boost productivity. Now he did do an on camera one. And I think I have him up right here. Yes. Yeah, Stephen Cutler. I'm not familiar with him. He just targeted me with one of his ads. <laughs> and if I go to his, uh, page transparency, and we should be able to see that he is currently running ads. This is always just really interesting for homeware. You can do this even if you don't plan to place any ads right now. Just look at what other people are doing, right? And then this is just- Peak ad. performance always works like He's compound voice, interest. It's about making voice. really it's tiny changes be better. And let's say 40 hours happens if we do- He's talking off camera, but he could have just shot this himself and, and turned it into an ad easy peasy like that. Again, with that long, long narrative. And like I say, I'll give you these uh, uh, slides just in case you, they're of value to you. This one was interesting. This was a local business saying that, uh, you know, we know the world's on pause, but we're here to help when you're ready again. And that was what's called a lead ad. This, what you see on the right side of your screen is, is a, a, a lead ad where you can just, if we, when you hit, actually, if I scroll down there, my details are already in there, my name and my email. That's the beauty of doing a lead ad. Uh, I thought that was a good one. Again, not a video. Oh, excuse me. It is my, my bad. It's got um, a video. It is a video, but when I went to find it, they actually not, not, uh, I got this screenshot a few days ago and they're, they're actually not placing it at the moment. So the video is not there uh, on their ads uh, at the moment. Then uh, just another one is talking about freelancing. I thought that was uh, on point. Sir, what services you should be providing as a freelancer, a free gift, nice offer. Um, that was a good one. And Michael Hyatt, he's a, he's a heavy advertiser. I see his ads all the time. Michael's good. He's a, he's a good leader, long verbiage and doing that. I think it's a free webinar on how to scale, how to scale your business revenue while working less. I don't know if I believe that Michael, but I love you anyway. <laughs> anyway, friends, as I mentioned, this whole training is brought to you in conjunction, in partnership with my good friends at InVideo, the world's easiest video tool really, really super duper. You can get a free trial. And then after that, you really love it. Go ahead and jump in. It's so inexpensive anyway. It's $5 a month. It's uh, um, $60 for the year. And you'll be able to crank out video unbelievably. You'll see professional quality videos, different formats. Use them on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, anywhere videos 
uh, uh, you can publish them, embed on your blog post, use them on organic, use them for paid, use them predominantly to connect more with your audience, to connect more deeply with your audience. Putting, as I've, I've been saying, this whole training is about making sure that you have this human, human aspect and the movement that catches people's eyes when they're scrolling through their feet. Now then, gosh, that was a lot to cover. And I thought I would be, um, I thought I would be as, uh, not quite as long, but that's okay. I see some questions here. This is beautiful. I'm going to go ahead and take some questions now. Here is Dania. Now, Dania is the very hair, hair, um, expert that I was mentioning. She has Westport hair. Now, this is really interesting. She's asking, do I recommend long narratives? It's fascinating to me that so many of those ad examples I showed you have long narratives. And yet, if you were to Google it and do any kind of study or research, the vast majority of, of studies that I've seen anyway, say that short narrative works better. But the short narrative may work better on organic posts. Clearly, with so many of these different advertisers who are super experienced, someone like Michael Hyatt and, and Janine Blackwell, they've been advertising for years and years and years. And clearly the longer narrative is working for them. The beautiful thing of a longer narrative is it gives the more detail oriented people who like more information, they can consume it right away, immediately. They don't have to tap or click it. You have to have the see more, open it up with the see more but they can consume more information and be more empowered and informed to make a decision whether to opt in or sign up or buy. But the key is you want to have the first like one or two, three, four, probably four lines. Absolutely compelling, like really on point. That's the most important, most important part of your ad. If I go back and just pull up, for example, Stevens here, like, like, cause these are mobile other than Janine's, everyone was uh, screenshotted from mobile and you can see questions too. Questions are good because they hook the mind. If you can open up with a question, are you working from home and feeling less productive? Probably the whole world can say yes to that right now, Steven, unless you know, you happen to be one of those people that does really well working from home. <laughs> um, when nothing is normal and businesses are forced to close their doors, that was not bad. And she said, so what's your online course going to be about? That's a question. Let me see what some of the other ones were. Um, that one, okay. That one wasn't a question, but that's okay. Learn exactly what services you should be providing as a freelancer. Learn is a good word to start with. Learn how to, how to is a great phrase. Um, and there's a question. See, here's Michael Hyatt. With today's crisis, you're probably wondering, is my business built to last? So questions. Now, the longer narrative, my point is longer narrative is totally fine so long as you start with a powerful opening question or statement. All righty. You bet. Patricia is asking me, do I need, do you need to use business manager to upload client lists? No, you just need ads manager. However, Facebook would love for all of us to use business manager simply because it's just a more streamlined way to manage your assets. And if you have different advertisers, you can add partners in there. You can have multiple ad accounts. Um, so, you know, and you can put your page in there and your ads manager, but you don't have to, you don't have to use business manager. You, you do have to have the ads manager to upload your client list. All right. Um, let's see. So some other questions, Claude, hi, Claude is asking our Claude, uh, what Facebook ad approach do you suggest for a musical artist or an author? There are such objective, well, excuse me. These are such subjective industries. How do I bring people to click? Okay. So what I love to do is always start with the end in mind. So in your question here, Claude, you're asking about a musical artist or an author. Let's say that the author's ultimate goal is to sell books. And right now they might be physical. They might be eBooks. They might be going driving straight to an Amazon link to buy the book on Kindle, or it could be straight to an offer page on the person's website with, uh, purchasing the PDF version. So we start there, a musical artist, no doubt selling their music, right? Selling a track or an album. So start there, work backwards. As I mentioned with that, that uh, grid that I showed you, cold, warm, hot. If this musical artist or author is trying to reach people who've never heard of them, thinking about like what kinds of 
problems might be, they be facing right now? What kinds of challenges? And of course, everybody's facing the same challenge with, with dealing with the virus, of course, and the lockdown and the pandemic and the impact that's having on the economy and business. In your case, whether you're asking about the artist, musical artist or author, right now, great time to be listening to music or to reading more books and picking specific books, specific tracks. So just starting with that warming up, getting people to know, like, and trust the musical artist or author, gathering community, doing some Facebook lives, possibly having a group with a book. I, I think it'd be great to do things like having a Facebook group that's geared towards almost like being a virtual reading, um, excuse me, book club, book club. Uh, I've seen Brene Brown do this. I love Brene Brown's books. And so where you actually have people who are going through the same book at the same time and sharing their experience and doing maybe some Q and A, maybe doing a challenge, things like that. All right. Uh, great. Okay, great. Tony says, I just got the products with your offer. Have you been upgraded to business plan? Woohoo. That's awesome. That's great. You're so welcome, Steven. Yep. Uh, Karen, you're asking me, what's my take on Facebook's own live producer? Why in video versus learning? Oh, no, 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 no. Totally, totally, totally different things. Facebook's live producer is for doing live, for broadcasting live. In video is for creating videos, for creating, not live. I mean, you could stream it live as a premiere, but the, the key difference here is in video is going to give you access to templates, ready-made templates, uh, 2000 of them, as I mentioned, and then, you know, million, uh, stock. Um, so this is totally, totally different. They're, you're comparing apples and oranges, right? So this isn't, I mean, it's a, I suppose you could think of it as a producer. It's a creator. It's a software that allows you to create and add all kinds of media and build and then export a video, right? As I, I played that whole um, hair, hair one for you. So you're exporting a video and then you're uploading it to your Facebook page uh, or you're using it as an ad. But Facebook's live producer is for doing live streams. Alrighty. <laughs> no problem. You're welcome. That's great. Daniel, yeah, Brene Brown on Sunday. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's awesome. That's great. All right, a few more questions. Thanks for being here. It's wonderful being with you. I really appreciate you. Um, that's a good point, Darian. Thank you for thank you for mentioning that. Because in when you go to your ad insights, right? You can see all the metrics when you go into your ads manager and Facebook lets you see gazillions of metrics. But one of them is what's called all clicks. You've got unique link click link clicks being that when people actually click through and then now they're going over to your website that's a link click whereas what darian's talking about here is um what's also counted as what facebook calls like all clicks which is like a click inside the ad so when someone does tap on see more that is signaling the ad algorithms aha your ad is resonating with your audience because people are clicking the see more to expand it and read the rest of the longer narrative, which as Darian's correctly pointing out, would actually help to lower your ad cost. Really great point. Thanks for bringing that up. Irene. Hi, Irene. Uh, lead ads. I was going to say something about them. Uh, so those are where I did show you one example where your information is already pre-populated. Pre-popular. You have to set up the form in advance. Uh, this one here I was mentioning about fun in the city. Um, mm, let me just take your question off. What you can see right now. I, I don't have it on the screenshot, but right there, you can just barely see it with my cursor down here. Um, if you was if I was to scroll up on that particular uh, screen, you would see that my name and email is already pre-filled out. I didn't do that. Facebook did it. And that's the beauty of a lead ad is that it actually pre-populates the form with the, uh, the target person, the person who you're placing your ad in front of it, pre-populates with their information. They can go in and change it, uh, right? And you can do that with a video. That's exactly what this, these guys did here. This is, you see the little play button and I don't have the video in front of me, but that was definitely a video. And it was just screenshots. It was just screenshots, excuse me, um, 
still images that were turned into a moving video. Okay, good stuff. Very good. Steven, this is a software it's called Ecamm and not conferencing. So con video conferencing, I use either Zoom or BlueJeans. Uh, live streaming, I use Ecamm for Mac, but you could use StreamYard. You could use BeLive. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Hey, Christopher. Exactly. Video is the most effective method for achieving great. Now, ROAS, these acronyms Christopher's using, if you're not familiar yet with, with the whole ads, is uh, ROAS is return on ad spend. So for every dollar that you put into an ad, how much are you getting back? ROI is called return on investment. Uh, on Facebook, mastering a tool like NVIDIA is the single most important success strategy right now. I totally agree. Thank you, Christopher. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. It's so, so, so easy to create video. And you can do them in a few moments from the comfort of your home where we're all locked down. <laughs> Hi, Janet. Fantastic. Janet and I have been friends forever. She says she's been using NVIDIA and she loves it. That's beautiful. Uh, great. And Danny is confirming, yeah, videos are the best to catch your audience. Yeah, exactly. It's that movement that catches the eye and a little tiny bit of movement. And then specifically, you can have people's faces in there and they can totally be stock faces. That's fine. Uh, again, going back to Zuckerberg's beautiful, heartwarming video that they, they created and shared. Um, Hannah, now I would say no, she's saying is it still worth doing like campaigns and, and feel free anybody here that wants to disagree with me. <laughs> what a like campaign is what Hannah's asking. That is where you are uh, putting your page out there to get more likes. You're at, you're doing a, an awareness, an awareness campaign um, or a reach campaign. You're, you're just wanting to get more likes. The thing is that the only real two scenarios to want to get more likes is number one is where you yourself are a social media expert or Facebook marketing or Facebook ads. And you need to have what's called in the industry, digi cred, which is digital credibility, digital credibility. Let's say, um, let's say, you know, you have maybe mm, a thousand fans and you want to build that up to two, three, four, 5,000, because you feel like you might be able to get more clients when they can see that you have a bigger fan page. That would be one reason to do a like campaign, digi cred, digital credibility. The other scenario might be if you have a brand spanking new page and hardly any fans and you feel that it just would look better public facing. However, keep in mind in either scenario, you still have to pay to reach whoever becomes your fan because organic reach is so low. It's between one and 6%. You're not going to be able to reach all those people, even if they become your fan. Uh, uh, Jared, know that Facebook ad costs are really much, much lower right now because there's such, such low, um, inventory. I mean, there's high, there's, there's more space to place ads and there's less advertisers, which means the costs are lower, generally speaking for most audiences. Hi, Hannah. So how much copy to recommend a video view ad to a cold audience? that we're, we're back to this place where it kind of, it depends because remember there's different types of people in the world. There's people who are bottom line. They're like, just give me the facts. They'll see that one opening sentence, one opening statement or question, everything about the ad, the video, the call to action, the, the offer, they'll go, this is for me. They click they go. They're like the fast action takers. You've got people who are more, much more detail oriented. They're more, their brains just go, no, oh, I need, or they're more cautious, right? They need more information. So you could do the longer copy for them. And then that's, that's there for them. That's why where they can hit the C more and they can get more copy, uh, more information. Um, and then there's everybody in between, right? So, um, I think in terms of how much copy, I don't know that's really like so critical as like what you're saying and what the offer is and how compelling it is. Um, or if it's not an offer, it's just a, a free training like I'm doing here today and you're just warming people up. You're giving away some value. The software is $5, $5 a month, uh, on the annual plan. So it's 60 bucks. That's all it's going to be. And there is a free trial. Uh, let's see. Okay. This is beautiful. Wonderful being with you.
anything else? I'm just checking other questions. <laughs> I'm just reading some of your comments. You're funny, guys. Uh, oh, this is great. I hear my hair, my hair salon friend as well. Uh, client, she's saying that she has friends on Facebook asking her for some advice about what to do with her hair. I'm showing her hair for it. Exactly. Yeah, I think that's, uh, yeah, yeah, really an interesting area right now. I'm certainly not going to cut my own hair, but at some point I will be doing some coloring on it. <laughs> uh, oh, how interesting. Hey, Jimmy, thanks for letting us know. He says that they, he couldn't even boost a post or an ad with the word pandemic. Yeah, Facebook, the other thing to know right now with your ads is they're going to take a little bit longer to get approved because of the uh, skeleton staff that's working at Facebook and really across the world for many, many businesses. Facebook has 45,000 employees across the whole world and vast majority of them are working from home. Um, Adam, Adam Masseri, who used to be the head of Newsfeed, Adam Masseri is the head of Instagram. He took over when... Kevin and uh, Mike left and Adam Masseri is running. He's the head of Instagram. He's running Instagram from his garage. <laughs> I was reading an article. So you're right. So my point though about Jimmy and the, the word pandemic is that almost all ads right now, whereas they normally might get reviewed uh, part AI and part human, they're almost all getting reviewed by the AI and the AI is getting a little bit more it's just a little tighter. I, I was running an ad campaign the other week. It was running for like three, four days. And then all of a sudden it says, oh, your ad, you can't use the word Facebook and Instagram in your ad. It's against our terms. I was like, ah, okay. All right. So friends, uh, it's wonderful being with you. And um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I hope you caught me in a good smiling screenshot. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One, one great, great point. Thank you, Chris, for pointing that out. He's like, do not worry at all about fans. One of his highest ROI campaigns was from a client. This is amazing. It's a brand, brand new Facebook page. Uh, Dr. Pete, Dr. Pete Moran. I've, I've used him in some of the pre previous examples, and he had incredible results with a brand new Facebook with six fans. <laughs> so, um, I will see you again. Got any more questions I can help you with? Do let me know. And I'm going to be going, what time is it? Okay, so in about 20 minutes, you can join me over in my social scoop group. And I'm going to go ahead and do some live audits over there. You can come and join me there. It's just called Marty Smith Social Scoop. Uh, we'll let you in right quick. And as I said right here, I'm going to do some free Facebook page audits. I didn't want this live to go too long, so I'm going to go and do a separate live. And I want to really see what you're doing, particularly with video. But no matter what you're doing, I'm going to take a look at your uh, Facebook page and just asking for volunteers to hop in the seat. Let me see how I'm doing. I'm just hitting refresh. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yep. We've got 20 folks have asked for one so far. More people are coming. <laughs> so how, come and join me over there and I'm going to do some, some um, critiques. Meanwhile, go ahead and hop over to, it's just invideo.io. It's not .com. It's .io or the link is right there. And you can see we've got um, this 50% offer and you can just go ahead and hit get started and off it'll go. Off it'll go. Now, I'm already logged in, so it's going to take me right to my login page. But uh, this is where, where you go. See that? It's only um, $60 for the business plan. Or you can go with the unlimited plan. If I just, you can look at all the different features as well. It's got some really great, great features in here. Um, and I know it keeps going to the logged in version. Oh, by the way, speaking of the... COVID is they do actually have a bunch of templates that you can use for free. If you're wondering like how to speak about them, and these are all, they show you the sources. They've got some great content right in here and that to just give you some ideas, some ideas, some safety tips, different ways that you could can possibly uh, utilize uh, some video in your content for, for that would be possibly relevant. I love this one. Yeah. Your body's your most priceless possession. Take care of it. Jack LaLanne. No kidding. So really love that the team at InVideo did that. They're such great, great, great team. I love working with them. Uh, okay. So any more questions, let us know. We'll do the best. What time? Uh, it's going to be 1130 Pacific. So 20 minutes, 20 minutes, take a quick 20 minute break. And then I will see you over 
in my social scoop group. I'll put the link for it right here. Don't put your Facebook page in these comments, put your Facebook page in the social scoop group. All right. And I'll see you over there. Go ahead and get yourself signed up with NVIDIA. Hope you got some value here today. Uh, it's totally okay to be placing ads right now. Take advantage of the massive amount of inventory because so people, fewer, fewer people are advertising means that uh, there's more inventory than uh, advertisers and uh, doesn't have to be massive amounts of money, but just little bits will help you to boost your reach and help you to keep your business going and thriving and reaching more people that might be really, really needing your products and services right now and just shifting up your messaging a little bit. I'll make sure you get these slides. I'll put the link in the comments. Enjoy the rest of your day. It's a blessing to be here with you. And thanks again to my good friends at InVideo for sponsoring this content. Thanks friends. Bye-bye. Cheers. Mm -hmm.